Amazon PMI is looking fairly punchy, yet of course there's the overhang of um, uh, what seems to be imminent uh, US strike on Syria. How, t how does the market weigh these two factors up? Um, I, I think it's putting greater weight on the global activity data, and not just for China and the Eurozone, of course, but for uh, virtually every major economy, we're seeing the data coming in consistently better than expected. Um, and that, that is generally propping up um, risk appetite and boosting the cyclical currencies. As the headlines that hit yesterday suggest, however, um, there is an underlying vulnerability to any escalation of, uh, of tension in the Middle East, and um, that, that risk is, is overhanging. But I think for, for the, the market's top of the agenda really is the improvement in global activity and the better risk backdrop that that leaves. So for you guys in the FX market, I presume that means higher dollar yen, higher, higher Aussie? Uh, I think it does short term, yes. I mean, dollar yen clearly is, is heading towards 100 and um, that probably has some magnetism of its own. Um, I, I think in the case of dollar yen in particular, though, I think it's important to, to bear in mind that what, what we observe there really is um, a currency pair which is being driven primarily by positioning rather than by any underlying asset flow. Um, and that will always be, uh, there will always be a vulnerability to corrections lower if those positions are threatened by geopolitical events. So, um, so yes, I think the momentum is higher. Uh, but um, I think there is an underlying vulnerability in that pair. And uh, talking of the geopolitical events and risks, um, it's not quite as straightforward as it might seem. Um, that's your opinion. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think that, that the um, rise in crude prices, when it's driven by uh, supply concerns, plays out very differently to a rise in crude prices, which is driven by confidence that demand is strong. So the obvious G10 uh, crude plays, so short dollar Canada, for instance, uh, short Euro Norway, um, don't work in an environment where it's supply that's a concern and markets are generally risk negative. So I think one needs to be very careful um, how one plays the positive side of the commodity story um, to neutralize any exposure to general risk appetite. So for instance, we think a couple of the pairs that do work in that environment would be long Norway, short Sweden, if you want to play the crude price with a risk neutral pair. Okay, and uh, just uh, let's finish up back to the back to the um, macro and the markets outlook. Um, we're only two days away from the all important August jobs report from the US. September taper seems to be on the way. That's the consensus of the market, but it's not your view. It's not. On balance, we think they'll probably wait until October. There's a lot of external event risk um, that, uh, that, that would make the case strongly for the Fed pausing for another month. Um, and unless the payrolls really change the game in terms of the employment background, we think it more likely they'll wait for the October meeting and uh, the tapering will begin at that point rather than the consensus, which I think is still fairly strongly in favour of September.